Hello everyone and welcome to my model evaluation tutorial. In this tutorial I'm going to be explaining uh, ways and methods for evaluating models. I'm going to be assuming that you are familiar with what a model is, what classification is, what regression is, uh, what a data set is, uh, what a test set is, what a training set is, and basically familiar with the process of uh, data mining, machine learning, data mining and machine learning and what they actually involve. You don't have to be an expert, just familiar with the terminology and with how the process actually works. Now, that's my name and this is where the material can be found. I have spoken to Professor Saeed Sayed. I have taken his permission to use his material. The material is available on the website. I've just converted it or transformed it into these slides. Um, now, evaluating models is an integral part, is an integral part of the model development process. It's quite important for us to find the best model that represents our data. It's very important for us to know how well the chosen model will work in the future. So we have, as you know, training data and testing data and these kind of uh, uh, set setups. Why we need to know, or we'd like to know, how good our model is and how well it will work in the future. Now, if we, for example, try to evaluate our model with the same data we use for training, then that's not a very good idea. That's not an acceptable idea because that can generate overfitted models. It can lead us into the problem of overfitting. What is overfitting? It's usually a result of having a very complicated model. A model that, for example, tries to memorize the training data and it does not generalize for future points or for future data. It does not work well for uh, new data data that, that it doesn't it didn't see before. Um, <coughs> so yeah it happens basically when uh, for example a model tries too hard to reduce the error on the data set on the training data set and it does not reduce that error when it's faced or when it's uh, 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 trialed or experimented with using a new data set that it didn't actually see before. Now we have two methods or two ways or two sort of uh, paradigms for evaluating models and data mining. We have a way or a method called the holdout method, holdout method, and the other one is called the cross validation method. Now to avoid overfitting both methods use a test set, i.e. a set that has not been seen by the model before. Now the holdout method, what, what we do here is, uh, we assume of course we have a large data set, so we assume we have a large data set, and what we, what we do is we randomly divide it into three subsets, a training subset or training set, a validation set, and a test set. For the training set, we use it to build the model. For the validation set, we use it to assess the performance of the model we build. Yes, so training set, we just build the model with that. The validation one, we use it to assess the performance of the model. Maybe we can build several models. Uh, it provides a test set or a test platform for fine-tuning the model's parameters. That's what I meant by building several models. So every time we change parameters, we have a slightly different model. We fine-tune the, the parameters. Uh, to the best of our ability so we can get good performance and then after that we select the best perform the best performing uh, model now not all models uh, not all modeling algorithms actually need a validation set and then for the test set we keep it unseen by the model so we keep it unseen from the model and then what we do is we use it as a test set to assess the likely future performance of the model that we build. So if a model fits the training set much better than it fits the test set, then that is very likely to be overfitting. Overfitting is probably the problem. So again, overfitting if the model fits the training set much better than it fits the test set. That's the whole dot method. Again, we have a large data set. We split it into, we split, randomly split it into uh, three subsets one for training and that's how we use it to build the model 
one for validation to assess the performance and fine-tune the parameters and one for the testing basically to assess the likely future performance of the model the other method is the cross-validation method now if we have a limited amount of data then we use this technique the way we do it is we split the data set into k subsets of equal size so let's say for example we have a data set that has 100 points then we can if we use k of 5 then we can split it into 5 subsets each of them will contain 20 data points or 20 instances we build models k times each time leaving out one of the subsets from training and use it as a test set so we build the model k times so again if we for example split our data set into five subsets of course of equal size then what we do is we for example keep the first subset out and use the other the remaining four subsets to build the model and then we use the first one for testing in the next iteration we use the first third fourth and fifth subsets for uh, to build the model and we use the second one for testing in the third iteration we leave the third one out, the third subset out we use the first, second, fourth and fifth to build the model and then the third for testing and so on and so forth K can be, uh, uh, um, a, mat can be a matter of choice, you can s use K 10, 5, 20 depends on your requirements usually people use 10 fold cross validation so usually a value, the value of K is usually 10 now if K equals the sample size this is called the leave one out cross validation method the LOO or the LU cross validation leave one out is when k equals the sample size so if my data set for example has 100 data points 100 data points and then I split it into 100 uh, um, sub data s uh, subsets then I can use 99 subsets or the 99 samples now for training and I use only one uh, point for testing what that means is I'm going to be uh, iterating 100 times and building 100 models out of the data set now let's take a simple example again assuming we have a data set we split it into k subsets first second kth minus one and then kth and then what we do is we use we leave the first one out we use the remaining k minus one uh, 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 subsets for training and we use the first one for testing in the next iteration we leave out the second subset we use the remaining one for testing for, for training and we use that subset the one we left out for testing we continue we leaving out the third subset using the first second fourth fifth and so on and so forth for the training and the third one for testing and we continue fourth fifth and so on until we reach k the last one so in the last iteration we use the first until the k minus one subsets for training and we use the kth one for testing to build our model remember we build k models and then for for example you can take the average if you want of those models so just an example data set uh, the world data set this one has 14 samples so if we use k for example of 3 then we can split it into 5 5 and 4 so 3 subsets the first one is, is of size 5 second one is of size uh, 5 third one of size 4 as I said uh, we do our best to split the data into k subsets of equal size here it's not possible because uh, 14 when divided by 5 we end up with 2 and remainder of 4 now again for evaluating models I'm going to be covering methods to uh, evaluate classifiers and regressors so for classification and for regression Thank you very much for watching and I'll see you in my next video.